Inside the box you'll find rules, a board, a handkerchief with a dry wipe score sheet on the back, a pack of cards, a cookie and a dry wipe pen. Set the board up in the middle of the table, put the pen aside for a moment, put the hanky to one side of the board with the, hang with the cookie on it and deal six cards out to the board. Then deal each player nine cards and you're ready to start. Cards come in various suits and they go from the numbers one to six. To get a card in front of you into your tableau and potentially score it, you will need to replace a card on the table. To do this, you will either need to play a card of the same color as a card on this board or a higher number. So if I want to place this red, orange over cards, I can place it over any where I'm higher number. If I want to replace this blue, however, I can use any number if I use another blue card. Now all my blue cards, if the game ended now, would be worth three points. So here I can replace it because it's a higher number. And then I can replace the six with a two because they're the same color. Oranges now, of course, worth five points each. So if the game ended here, I'd be scoring 10 points from my oranges. Of course, the other players are gonna try and mess this up for you, make things score less points and generally annoy you. The other thing you can do in your turn is play a card face down as a black hat that will score you one point and when you have the most different types of hat you will obtain the cookie which is worth five points at the end of the game. Speaking of the end of the game let's see what we would score here. My brown would score one point, I have no reds, my blue would score three points, my greens would score four points, my oranges I have two of, so I score a total of 10, and I score 12 for my purples. The card in my hand is a four, so that comes off my six, giving me two points, a point for my black hat, and five for my cookie. Highest score wins. Hats is part of a new range of games from Thundergriff Games that are all gonna come in these cool little book-like boxes with the theme, um, into ah, I forgot what the theme is, it's something like Into the Looking Glass or Into Wonderland. Um, and the idea is that they will give you the feel of a deluxe Kickstarter project without having to back it. And certainly that is on display here with the quality of the cards, the whiteboard score pad, the cookie marker which serves as points and a tiebreaker. The game itself is fantastically simple to play but deceptive in how thinky it is. The essence of the game is trying to affect this scoreboard to benefit you the most. And the way you do that, of course, is by playing cards to it, but then you're gonna be taking off the card that you replace. So you wanna be taking off cards that are gonna score, but you also don't wanna be showing your hand too early so someone can essentially bomb the colors that you're going for because they can see the colors that you're going for in front of you. It reminds me uh, slightly of the stock market system in mini rails, the way that the disc that's left over moves down and they're the only discs that will score positively. You have a similar amount of influence. So what you have is people kind of bluffing and biding their time between doing what they really want to do, which is get the colours that they have in their hand a lot of, or that are on the board a lot of, in front of them, and uh, just playing sneaky little ones to bomb what they think the other person or people might be doing. A six in a position, if I put this six here into the purple position replacing the one and take that purple in front of me, that's potentially great. This one is going to score me six points at the end of the game. But I then put a six out there and, intend and signal my intention to score purples at least once. Sixes are hard to replace for sure, but if someone has another purple, even a purple two, they can replace that, making that purple spot now uh, susceptible to being changed more easily because it has a lower number on. Not to mention the fact that they then have the purple six as well, so they will be scoring purples too. It's a clever scoring system, and this is where the game is deceptive. You will understand what you have to do on your first game, but you won't pick up the nuances and the uh, ways of influencing scoring until you've played it a couple of times. Now, 
you will play it a couple of times after that first time if you play at the start of the night like we did. The first time we played this, we played it three times. The second time we played it, we played it two times in a row. In fact, I don't think it's hit the table without being played multiple times thanks to its short uh, space of time that it takes up, its quick setup, and its interesting and intriguing scoring mechanism. In some ways, it's like one of those card games like Red Seven or Fuji Flush, which you just play over and over because someone gets the upper hand on you, like, right, I want another go to try and beat you. But at the same time, it's deeper than those games because of this wonderfully clever scoring system. The components, as I've said, are lovely, but also the different colour cards not only uh, are illustrated differently, but all have different suits or different symbols on. So even the ones that I, as a non-colour blind, full-sighted, apart from these goggles, person have trouble telling apart, which is namely the orange and the red, you can quickly look at the symbol underneath them and the uh, beautifully drawn hats on the cards. Speaking of hats, yeah, the theme here is about collecting hats, but you are essentially collecting cards. This is not a game that is going to drag you into the theme any more than the artwork does, which the art is spectacular and stylized. Uh, so if you're looking for a theme-filled card game, then, well, what card games are full of theme? You know, it's one of those things. They've done the best they can, there's an interesting scoring mechanic, and the options, although you only have two, play one face down for a guaranteed point, or swap a card, uh, they are all interesting, and you will have times when everyone is just like, oh, you've just done that. Okay, so does that mean you're going for that? What should I use from my hand? And um, although that kind of level of thinkiness does come into the game, it doesn't slow the game down because ultimately there's still only two things you can do. Play a hat face down or take one on the board. The cleverness of the scoring too where if there are multiple um, colours, uh, multiples of the same colour on the board, the higher ones get turned over and don't score, just gives you another option to bomb people. So, for example, if it's my opponent that has the purple card and not me, I can uh, then replace this one down here with a, this four brown with a five purple. And now I know that when scoring comes, if this board remains the same, the six is going to turn around. So, six, so purples won't score six, they will instead score one. And that's a great late game move to play to frustrate your opponents. This game is highly interactive. You're always weighing up, will my move give me more than it will take away from my opponent? Because it's going to affect your opponent. Your moves are either going to be helpful for your opponents or not. There's no real neutral here. There's no real, like, I don't really care about that move if they've got the colours in front of them. If they haven't got the colours in front of them, yeah, it's kind of zero sum. But, well, it's only going to benefit you. But when they've started to get the colours in front of you, wow, then it takes on a kind of, hmm, we, who should I benefit here? Who's got the least to, most to lose? I've seen players uh, stack as many cards as they can into what they think is going to score the six and five point places. I saw a player just try and get one card from every colour in front of them. And actually, they won with that strategy, only by one point, but it also got them the cookie. Uh, the cookie itself is a great little um, extra thing to think about. The player who's got the most different colours in front of them gets the cookie. If there's a tie break, the player with the lowest number numerical on the cards, so in this case one would get it, then you go to two, three, four, five, six, all explained really, really well in the rule books. I am quite taken with this game. It is a game that I will take with me places. It is a game that uh, looks good, that plays well, that is easy to explain, but takes a few games to grasp, and that's not a bad thing. I have loads of card games that are easy to explain, and people just play it, they get it straight away, and they play them. I love having card games like this, where I can play them with my group, knowing that they'll think it's a little bit like, oh, another lightweight game, and then they go, deal again, I want to play again. So, intimidation factor in this card game. There 
isn't an intimidation factor from the presentation, from the rules, but the scoring does take your uh, take a while to take a couple of games to grasp. Uh, there is an intimidation factor in that if you are a new player. I would, with new players who aren't into games a lot, I would probably just set it up and show an example scoring. Put some cards out and show the example scoring, particularly the favourite hat scoring, because that's the one that always catches people out. You've got to have one card left, which again is another great me mechanism that gives you something extra to think about. As you're getting down lower in your cards, you're like, oh, I keep one of these and that's coming off my score if I don't have high enough numerically on the table. Um, so there is a little bit to kind of grok within the scoring. Um, the rule book is very good though, short to the point, doesn't mess around, doesn't leave any questions to be asked. Uh, so that is excellent. Will this be staying in my collection? Absolutely. This is uh, one of my favourite small short card games of recent times uh, and I've played it a lot recently. I just really, similar again, similar. I come back to Mini Rails, the cleverness of the scoring applied to mechanics that you have uh, familiarity with just really makes this game. The fact that the scoreboard is just the whole interaction is taking place on this scoreboard and between you. And who's going to be brave enough to pin their colours to the mask or make that brave, bold statement, start trying to set things up. And the more you play it, the more you realise that if you play cleverly, you can set up some great moves. I love hats. Uh, this is a strong recommendation for me. If you like card games, if you like games with clever scoring me mechanisms, if you want card games that are going to last, uh, have some legs that are going to last and be just brilliant to bring out for your game group, then Hats is well worth looking at. It has the usual thunder grip, attention to detail, and I can't wait to see the next game in this line. Thanks very much for watching Board Deck and Dice. We will see you next time.